China has so much influence on America. It's 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 crazy how different the playing field is between like what we're allowed to do. Like Americans can't own businesses in China, they can't own land in China, they can't buy property, but China can do all those things here. And they can influence our universities, they bring their students over here, their students siphon up data and information and oftentimes get caught. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. it's kind of yeah, crazy. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they get caught, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, there's been quite a few of those cases. There but, have been, but but, but the, you the think sp- about that's a, that's the tip of the iceberg, right? That's a that's a that's a small number that because it's it's a, it's an incredibly heavy lift, right? A counterintelligence operation is is really tough, and so I look at that and I think, yeah, I'm, thank God we caught that person. But then you think, well, how many more are there out there? Right. So, that's the thing. It's like yeah. how many of them are just more careful? Yeah, yeah. It's um. It is interesting. In a way, we used to talk about during when, you know, when we were on the war on terror, right? And everybody's forgotten about that, you know, for the most part. Although we probably should talk a it's little bit about it. It's on the back about, burner. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's bubbling away in Afghanistan, which we should also talk about. But, but we used to talk about war on terror and how the, the terrorists were using our open society against us, right? Right. And... And, you know, the Chinese regime does the same thing, right? They understand, and they, they look at how we operate, and they say, okay, where's the, where's the, where's the weaknesses, right? Where are, the, where are the leverage points that we can use to turn that against them? And, you know, we, this, this idea, um, I mean, look, China produces more carbon than all the developed nations combined. Which is very important to talk about yeah. when people are talking about going green, because the amount of impact that it would happen, even if the United States went to zero, went to zero carbon output, you're not going to put a dent in what's happening oh. to the world. Because oh. most of it is coming from China and India. India, India, right. Yeah. Right. That's most of it. So all this shit about don't eat meat because we're going to save the world, you're not saving <laughs> jack shit. No. And I don't understand where that message is coming from or why there's not a nuanced perspective where people are taking into account all these other variables. Well, in part, uh, again, it doesn't um, fit the narrative. It doesn't fit the narrative, but also there is this this effort. Look, I mean, we we talked, you know, there's, you remember the uh, what was that called? Internet Research Agency, right? Yeah. It was, yeah, and so we, we, the the potential for influence on the elections, right, yeah. back in the day, um, which wasn't that long ago, and the Chinese regime actually does it better than the Russians, right? They've got way more resources. Uh, they've got a much longer view. Um, frankly, they're more sophisticated, right? Um, and so sometimes you look at things and you think, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why, you know, why are we, you know, acting in this way? And then you think, well, because you've got like a, a local or a grassroots community activist group, right? And they're not, they're not Chinese spies. They're not working, but they're, the Chinese regime identifies them and says, you know what, if we can influence them, this is just pure, you know, propaganda or covert action campaign. If I can influence that activist group to go out and tell those whomever, the city officials or the county commissioners or whatever, that this is bad, right? And this is, we, we need to stop this, right? We shouldn't be mining for lithium in Nevada or wherever. Uh, we shouldn't be pursuing, you know, uh, logical steps to get uh, you know uh, control over the critical mineral supply chain issue, right? Um, why wouldn't you do that, right? It's it's smart activity on the part of the Chinese regime and the intel service there. So that part of it to me makes makes sense. The problem we have is that there's a lack of awareness, right? Now there was a again this shows you I've been spending too much time reading on the ship, but I, I I'm fascinated by this this idea that we're trying to do two things that are completely opposed to each other. Stop fossil fuels and also keep critical minerals on the ground that we're going to need to pursue green energy. I, I did, that, that part is amazing, but I did actually write down. Well, but go. that is part of the problem with green energy is that it's not really green because you do have to mine. And when you do mine, yeah. there is consequences. There's consequences. And that's but as I mean, as you pointed out, we, I mean, look, we, we mine cleaner and safer than anybody else. 
And that's why there was a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually read a quote. This shows you. Look, see, I feel like I'm maturing. I've gotten You're more so organized. You're so prepared, Mike. I'm so I know, proud of you. I know. Look, this. See, I know. There, there have been times when you've been staring at me, thinking, <laughs> "Where the fuck is he talking about?" Or is, is he going? Is he taking a nap? Um, so they had a hearing in, in Arizona not too long ago uh, about critical minerals, the issue of critical minerals and the importance of them and the importance of speeding up the permitting process. If we want, again, if we want to pursue a green future, you got to do it. And uh, this guy, Congressman, uh, I know I've got a note here, Gozar, Paul Gozar from wherever, Arizona said, and this is a quote, the anti-mining actions by the Biden administration hurt America's economy, threaten our national security and push mineral production abroad Eh? where environmental and labor standards pale in compa- comparison with our own, right? And that's absolutely correct. And, and again, you, you, all you have to do is look at what goes on in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's, it's, yeah, it's insane, but I don't see that we're going to walk that back, right? Because there's just there's too much pushback. And no matter what mineral you're talking about, I don't see that necessarily changing unless you get maybe a, a change in administration and then you get the effort to deregulate, and then you speed up permitting. But at some point, we're going to be screwed. China, China recently uh, put the brakes on exporting a couple of minerals that are critical to producing mineral systems and solar panels, um, and they've done it that in the past, right? And it, that should be a clear signal to us that we got to change our thought process on all of this. But I, I'm, I'm not confident that will happen. So, mm. Anyway, yeah, I'm not confident either because it seems like that narrative is just in the American public. You know, the mining is bad. We need to go green, but they don't see the inconsistencies of taking those two positions at the same time. Same time. Well, they, they, yeah, the, the, the Republicans have never done a particularly good job of messaging, right? And they need to they need to get better at it. So, and I think they will. There's a few there's a few bills passed around apparently um, that may help the situation, but. Uh, for now, I guess, you know, with with China's kind of significant control over the minerals as it stands, um, we don't have any option other than to deal with them, right? In a, in a, and so no wonder we sometimes don't push back. I mean, I guess that's where I was coming back around. You say, well, why don't we push back or how we, you know, this, uh, we, we don't have that much leverage right now. So I think that's part of the answer. Mm. 